Kindly mute all your audios.
a very very good evening to all of you welcome to stroke it's an absolute pleasure to be doing this particular session i'm just going to take a minute to share the screen just give me a minute Well, good evening and uh, welcome to Stroke by Maisha Studio. I'm Aishwarya Manivanu, the founder and creative director of My Maisha Studio. The reason why we wanted to do Stroke is because every single day I meet so many different students who are interested in art and design, who want to pursue uh, the creative industries or a career in the creative industry, but have absolutely no idea where to start. and this is the reason why we decided to do strokes for it to be an introduction of thought to art and design education and in that sense i think design um, who want to put thought in um, for uh, the creative industry all of us or a career to, to understand industry, but how have absolutely no idea and design where to start. and the creative industry and this is the reason why we decided to do strokes for it to be an introduction of and thought that to sense, art and design education is and in that sense i think your design um, who want to put thought in uh, for or the creative industry all of us or a career to, to understand number one have absolute life idea and design and creative and so this is the reason why we decided to do so to be able to identify the introduction of thought to that through art and design education uh, is and in that sense i think your design who um, want to put thought in for or the creative industry all of us or a career to understand number one have absolute life idea and design and creative and and so this is the reason why i decided to do so to be able to identify the introduction of thought and that through art and design education uh, is and in that sense i think your design who want to put thought in for uh, the creative industry all of us or a career to understand number one have absolute life idea and design and creative and and so this is the reason why i decided to do so to be able to identify the introduction of thought and that through art and design education uh, is and in that sense i think your design who want to put thought in for the creative industry all of us or a career to understand I'm really sorry about the 
a, a small technical glitch that we had right now. I hope it's okay and I hope you guys can hear me clearly. If you can hear me clearly, if you can please say yes. Great. I'm so sorry about the glitch. We're going to continue now. Um, so like I said before, Strokes is really meant to open out the opportunities and the possibilities that the creative industries has for all of you budding artists and designers. And we at Maisha Studio believe that every single person in the world has a creative tendency within them. And we are trying to look into this aspect to see how you can move forward in terms of both your education and your career. So we're gonna go back to some of the points that I wanted to share with you. So why strokes, right? Number one, to be able to explore a lot of different art and design fields. Secondly, to be able to identify both courses and universities that offer art and design uh, program. To understand the admission process, because over the years I've worked with thousands and thousands of students and every day I speak to so many students who really do not understand and do not know where to begin. And that is why the admission process becomes a very important aspect in this whole scenario. And finally, and most importantly, understanding the different portfolio guidelines that become one of the most important aspects of the entire process, because the portfolio is pivotal in allowing you to move on to the next and this is why strokes as an event is important because it is meant to raise awareness but also give you very clear next steps to move forward in your individual journey so for those of you who are new to maisha studio we are a chennai based art and design academy i founded maisha studio about 8 years back and we focus on a lot of different interesting aspects relating to art and design education Primarily, there are a lot of students who work with us on art and design foundation programs because art and design both are not a part of the mainstream curriculum in the Indian school um, system, right? So then the art and design foundation is meant to equip students with a really strong base to then move on to different specializations within the design field. We also work on portfolio development at different levels, both in the undergraduate and in the master's level as well. Again, across specialization. We are also working with a lot of professionals from different fields who come in for uh, professional skill development programs because at the end of the day, just a good education is not enough. You need to be able to be successful in the field, right? So in that sense, it becomes really important to also work with your skill development as a professional. Next, we also have education and career mentorship programs, wherein it's really about getting a guidance and mentorship throughout your education in terms of choices, in terms of next steps, and then moving on to your career as well. So it's a very dynamic uh, approach in that sense. We have a lot of really interesting events. I'm going to continue with the session. We do have a Q&A section open, so please keep your questions running. Do not uh, hold back on your questions. Um, and we will definitely answer all of your questions through the session and in the end during the, um, the final question answer session as well. So please keep your questions coming. And um, we also are going to be having eight of our students from the 2020 batch from Maisha Studio who are going to be sharing their personal uh, journeys with you as well. So uh, that is going to come in a bit also. So we have a lot of interesting content lined up for you. So we're gonna move on. So when we look at the creative industries as a whole, 
there are two aspects or two sides to it one being art and the other being design and i feel that art and design are some of the most misused and misinterpreted words because a lot of people do not understand what is art what is design and what is it that you really want to do i have a lot of students who come and tell me that they want to do design but through a conversation with them um i realize that it's actually design that they want to do or they come to me saying they want to do um architecture but then they have a completely wrong understanding of what the field entails so we're going to look into pretty much what each of these different sections have within them so when we take art as a whole we can split art into visual arts and performing arts so between visual arts and performing arts visual arts has draw, painting drawing film making art therapy photography all of these are different aspects or specializations within the broad field of visual arts itself and if you are not really interested in the process of creating art but you are also interested in the business side to art then there is also gallery curation and arts management as well so all of these are different options that you can consider when you are looking at visual arts as a whole and art therapy is another very very popular and much needed field that is available today for study next we have within performing arts we also have a uh, dance music theater whether you're a singer or you uh, play a particular instrument all of that comes within performing arts there's also drama and musical theater so when you say the arts it depends on whether you're talking about visual arts or performing arts and then we move on to the huge field of design which is phenomenal and one of my favorite fields so i've split the, the design field into four different departments as such 3d design fashion graphic and film so when we look into the 3d design department a lot comes within 3d design it's prime it primarily or in a generic manner we're talking about the design of three dimensional products so then there's architecture there's furniture design interior design industrial design design all of these come within the 3d design section fashion which is a, a very popular and quite a, a large field there's apparel there's knitwear fashion business leather jewelry design makeup accessories all of these come within the fashion design section moving on to graphic design or communication design and there's a huge huge need for graphic and communication design in today's day and age because of how much of interfaces we work with on a day to day basis so it could be our phones it could be our laptops our tabs all of these are interfaces that have designers behind them so in that sense there's design for artificial intelligence or um there's augmented reality there's game design there's ui ux design publishing design which is book design packaging which is another amazing field advertising and all of this and of course the popular animation which all comes within the graphic design uh, section and then moving on to film we we come from the uh, the, the land of bollywood and uh, of course film is a popular department so there's cinematography there's direction film making art direction production design uh, set design which becomes a part of art direction as well and these are all some of the uh, areas within the film section so then when we look at art and design as two separate areas the main difference between art and design is that design has a specific function and in that sense pretty much everything around us is a product of design there is absolutely no question that there are um, pretty much all of the products around us has a designer behind that behind it whether it's the chair that i'm sitting on whether it's the phone that you're using or the jewelry that you're wearing or the car that you drive all of these have been designed and created by a team of of designers that really form the the starting point of all of the products around us 
but then when you have all of these different possibilities in both art and design specializations the big question arises where do i start and which are the good universities that are available in order for me to start my ed education or for me to continue my education you might have already completed a, a, a general or an open ended undergraduate program and then you want to move into a masters program to specialize in a particular field of art and design so here the choice of courses and universities becomes a very very important aspect to consider now in this case we're going to look at universities a, a select few universities across a few different countries and in areas the listed uh, universities are not based on any particular hierarchy or any particular uh, listing or choice this is just a general list to give you a more of a starting point to look at some good quality institutions that are available but there are a lot more good universities that are um, doing some fabulous work across the world so we're going to start with india of course there's nid national institute of design and national institute of fashion technology which are two premier institutions for design but apart from them we also have isdi srishti mit iit we have a lot of product design automobile industrial design courses in iits and mits as well whereas when you then move into southeast asia which is a popular um, kind of destination education destination for indians there's singapore and lasal college of the arts and nafa are some of the top universities in in the whole of southeast asia and there's also hong kong polytechnic university most of the universities that i'm talking to you about right now are are all students uh, are all universities where students of maisha studio have been to our or are in right now and so i know the kind of quality that the universities provide and then when you move into europe which is another very popular destination in terms of culture and and lifestyle there's university of arts london with a lot of popular schools within their banner like central saint martins and london college of communication and london college of fashion and then there's royal college of art which is one of the world it is the world's best university for postgraduate education in design there's domus academy there's glasgow school of art ie in spain and a lot of other universities across milan france and other parts of europe as well and then when we move on to uh, areas like australia there's rmit in the us the us is filled with so many different options like scad parsons cornell uh, rhode island cal arts school of visual arts in canada has also become a very popular destination in recent times there's ocad university and toronto university which are all popular choices for indian students who want to pursue art and design so right now we've basically looked at art and design in a very general sense what are the different specializations that are available in art what are the different specializations available in design and which are some of the universities that you can get into now we're moving on to the question why design why should you get into the creative industry is it a safe field to get into are there a lot of opportunities that's going to come up in the future and for that i must say a big yes yes because at the end of the day 10 years down the line 20 years down the line sometime in the future most of our jobs are going to be taken up by technology and creativity in that sense becomes one of human uh, human kind's biggest strengths and gifts and this is what sets us apart so the creative industries becomes a melting point because the need for design is constantly increasing and it's also a great place for us to really bring together all of our different interests and and combine it to create a really interesting role that we can play in the world today and in that sense the design industry and the needs in the design industry has only been skyrocketing over the last 10 years and it's only seeing a sharp rise and i don't see it coming down any time in the near future and that makes it a great place to be so what is the path you're interested in it you want to do it but how do you begin and where do you start so in terms of your admission as a whole there are a lot of different aspects that are required but in that sense your portfolio your creative portfolio your design portfolio becomes one of the most important aspects within the 
requirements for an art and design program. Now, in this case, the portfolio, as we call it, is going to be a very common term that you're going to be hearing. So what is a portfolio? A portfolio is a selection of your best projects. These are all projects that you are proud of and that represents your technical and uh, creative ability in whatever field you're getting into. We're going to have about eight of our students from the 2020 Maisha Studio batch who are going to be sharing their experiences. And these are all students who are going into different specializations and universities in the next few months. So through their conversations, you're going to learn a lot about how to move forward in terms of your preparation, what is important, what are certain commonly uh, overlooked areas, and and we're also going to be sharing some of their recent work, which I'm sure you will find very interesting. To start with, we uh, are going to have Azam. He is going to be pursuing an undergraduate program in strategic design. So I'd like to invite Azam as the first student who's going to share uh, his success story. Azam, can we have you on board? Yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. All right. Good evening, everyone. Amazon, a high school graduate, high school graduate, however, in actuality, I'm just, actuality, I'm just not too curious about the depths of the depths of invested in understanding the multi the real world, more specifically, the, world. The, more specifically the, the drive to be a part of the, the business drive world to be a part of the business world is an important part of my childhood, part of my childhood, and being surrounded by the being surrounded on both sides of the businessman on both sides of the what they did was oh, just an idea that they were selling. My cousins and I started big. My cousins and I started big. Then we just wanted to buy a portrait. We just wanted to buy a portrait. But that we were designing That we were designing Even designing as a confused child. As a confused child. I would find never really knew that it was in turn never really knew that it was in turn an essential part. Now what I'm getting at is now, that what I'm getting at is that more often we are what is that categorizing them into the categorizing them into the right our interest is what usually takes our interest is what usually takes time. I stepped into the field of design a lot. I stepped into the field of design a lot later than many of my I had absolutely zero experience. Absolutely zero experience with and I and it was a tough understood the importance of understood the importance of improving my I just I just wasn't able I just, to I just wasn't able to Is my voice fine? Is my voice fine? It overlapping? Is it overlapping? Is it still happening now? The overlap? No? Okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll continue from where I left off. Um, right, so what I'm basically getting at is that more often than not, we all have interests. And the problem that most of us face is 
categorizing these interests and putting them into the right course of action, which best fits our interests. And that's a procedure which usually takes time for all of us. And that's completely all right because I stepped into the design field a lot later than many of my, peer, many of my peers because I had absolutely zero experience with fine arts, sketching, or any form of drawing or creative expression. I understood the importance of improving my sketching abilities, but it never really brought out the best of my abilities. I was never really able to give my all to my creative thoughts and I needed a solution. And the, solu the solution was right before my very eyes, my laptop. Um, fortunately, we live in an era where we can see the rise of digital art and digital design. Um, we can see the rise of 3D modeling softwares, the whole collection by Adobe. The options are endless and ever developing now. So don't panic if you're struggling with a bit of observational sketching, it's fine, you'll find your way out. But right now, more importantly, what I would like to share is that after going through the portfolio development course at Maisha Studio, I was able to submit a portfolio that I was content with and got accepted into some great universities. Um, now as a senior, um, I have my juniors come up to me and ask, Azam, what's the most important thing in the portfolio development process? What's the most crucial thing that I need to think of in my portfolio development process? Well, my only answer to that is it's the process because examiners understand that we are still students and as much importance as they give to the final outcome of your, any of your projects in your portfolio, they give more importance to your creative process and your design thinking process as a creative individual. And which is why my advice to anyone starting a new portfolio would be to document your process. But more importantly, enjoy that process and be honest with your engagement with the process because that's what they'll see and that's what they'll be happy with at the end of the day. And more than your examiners, it's you who'll be happy with what, you've, what you have in your portfolio because it's something that is evidence for your hard work and something that you'd be very, very proud of at the end of the day. And with that, I conclude my speech and pass this virtual floor on to Anshika, who's specializing in the field of architecture. Thank you. Thank you, Azam, for the introduction. Uh, so before I start, I just want to make sure if I'm audible and clear. Okay, um, so hi everyone, my name is Vanshika and I'm going to be studying architecture uh, and I'm here to share my story with you. But to be honest, I don't really know where this story or this journey began. Uh, looking back, I, I just remember that when I was nine years old and our house was getting renovated and the architect was walking around waving his arms and you know explaining what he visualizes in this area what he sees in this space and I was like yeah that's what I want to do but just like any other nine-year-old my mind wavered and the next day I wanted to become a banker and then a journalist and then I was back to square one I didn't know what to do but I guess I, over the years, I just took up activities that I enjoyed and uh, took up the subjects that I wanted to study. So I did science in 11th and 12th, along with computer science. I didn't take any art classes um, in high school, and I'd stop my art classes outside of school in the seventh or eighth grade. Um, but I guess my interest in this creative field for, of art and design never really died. I still wanted to pursue it, maybe not as a career at the time, but at least as a hobby. And so I joined Maisha Studio in the beginning of 11th grade with the intention of just exploring all my possibilities and um, developing a portfolio as an additional um, asset to my overall application. But after many classes, workshops, and even taking part in the OTL exhibition conducted by Ashwarya Ma'am, I realized that design is more than just a hobby for me. However, at no point was it a complete shift from science to art. I really enjoyed the subjects that I was doing in school, and I did not want to let that go. Instead, I wanted it to be a part of my next step. 
And so I guess my passion for science, technology, and design um, allowed me to just look out for fields that combine all three. And that's how I found architecture. For me, architecture is like a perfect amalgamation of science and art. But more importantly, as this new science and art student, I started questioning, observing, and um, just being more aware of the environment. During my travels, um, I was very intrigued by the traditions, culture, and history associated with buildings and the co-dependence of art and architecture. I realized that I wanted to study the progress of architecture from antiquity to the present, and my interest towards modern challenges like sustainability and eco-friendly design all just fueled my passion to study architecture. Now, all of this is just my journey as to how I realized what I wanted to study. But the next big question was, how do you get there? And this was a scary thought because in the beginning of 11th grade, when I took up art as well, I was bombarded with this question, how are you going to do science and art? You know, you've got to keep your grades up. And um, every, everyone telling me this was, all of this was scary enough. And at the back of my mind, I was like, yep. And I want to continue other activities as well, like dancing, debating, a leadership role in school. So it was definitely a journey of ups and downs. Uh, I didn't know what I was going into when I started. Um, and everyone was telling me that, you know, you have to prioritize. And all of that's easy to say, but I didn't know how prioritize. So it was a rough road. It's a journey of ups and downs. But the truth is that you won't know how to tackle each obstacle unless you start the process. Uh, and so that's what I did. Um, I've learned a lot over the last two years. Um, this is not the end of my journey. My there's a This is just the beginning. And if after two years, the one thing that I've understood that like I, I'd like to share with you today is that if you have multiple passions, you shouldn't be forced to choose one of them. There is something out there in the world for you that will allow you to combine all of your interests and pursue that as a package. And for me, that next step is going to be at Carnegie Mellon University where I'll be studying architecture. So yeah, that's about my story. And now over to Sadhana, who's going to be studying communication design. Um, thank you, Manchika. Uh, like Manchika said, I'm Sadhana Seshadri. Uh, I'm going to be pursuing my undergraduate in communications design. Um, like many of you here today, when I first realized that design is something that I would like to pursue, I wasn't exactly sure as to which major to choose. I mean, design is such a huge platform. You have so many opportunities and avenues to explore. And I realized it was very important for me to get as much as exposure as I could so that I could broaden my horizons and understand a lot more of what the creative world has to offer. Uh, I personally had the chance, the opportunity to undertake the IGCSE Art and Design course in grades 9 and 10, as well as the IB, IBDP Visual Arts program in 11 and 12. And because I was always in touch with art and design, it allowed me to explore so many different mediums. And I think in all of this, the best part was I didn't have any restrictions. Most of the time, I didn't even have a final goal to work towards. It was just about understanding the process and figuring out which mediums I like working with, whether it was exploring mediums, understanding conceptual art, working with digital art. And this just let me like let go of all the other restrictions I had and understand my own art making techniques through the whole process. And uh, in addition to this, because I was also working with Maisha Studio, um, I was able to attend many workshops. So this allowed me to explore 2D forms of design, 3D forms of design. And when it ultimately came down to choosing the major, which I would like to pursue for my undergraduation, I was able to take all of these into consideration. And because I was because I had exposure to all these fields, it kind of shaped my perspectives to what I would like to pursue in the future. And um, that's when I realized that communications design is something that I would like to take up further. And um, that's why that, that's partially why I'm going to be pursuing this in my fu uh, future studies as well. Um, when I was compiling my portfolio, one thing I realized is that process documentation is one of the most important things. I overlooked this in many of my projects um, because I kind of figured that, you know, the project is quite straightforward. People can stitch the process together and more or less understand how it works. Looking back at it, I know that I'm definitely wrong to think that way. Uh, process documentation is essentially showing your journey of, from how you came to that one concept, how you reached your final um, final product. And it's about showing the, the research you gathered, the data you collected, uh, the multiple drafts you had to work with, all the data, all the um, 
media you explored and basically it's presenting your whole journey from step one to how you reached your final step and it's not only really important for you to do this so you could reflect on your work because that's a very important part of the creative journey itself you need to be reflecting on your work um, constantly to understand uh, what went wrong what you could have done better and um, whether how you ideated for a particular concept but when it finally comes to submitting your portfolio colleges want to see your process they want to see the backstory for every project and think of, think of it this way when you finally complete a work you should use your process to validate the amount of time and effort you put into each project and i feel that's something very important i overlooked it and uh, before it's too late you will want to pro document your process so you don't regret it later um, and something now a little more specific to communications design itself uh, what i've understood from this field so far is that communications design itself means um, uh, presenting ideas and um, concepts through visuals and one of the most important parts is no matter how complex an idea might seem it's your role to break it down and put it in, in the most simple terms because at the end of the day you're trying to reach your target audience so if you want them to understand what you've designed it's important that it's in the most simple terms and that anyone can connect to it and relate with the work you've done and if you're able to accomplish this in your projects everything else is likely to fall in place and that way you could even think of your portfolio as um, like working for a small company for each project and that way you'll be able to complete a lot of projects in time as well. Um, if you have any other questions, do ask us in the question box. Um, now I'd like to pass it over to Hadmi and she's going to be pursuing her undergraduation in animation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sadhana. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Harini Shri and I will be doing my undergraduate program in animation and VFX at Artemisia College of Art and Design Indoor. My relationship with animation dates back to when I was a little kid. I used to come back home from school, go to the fridge, grab a snack, crash on the sofa, and just watch animated shows back to back. Some of which you might recognize are Tom and Jerry, Kid vs. Cat, Phineas and Ferb, as well as Kick Butowski. Ratatouille, if I got hold of my mom's phone. What these shows and movies provoked me to do was that I created this imaginative world of what if. For instance, what if the Tikarana in the corner of his street is actually a spy working for the government? Or what if a caveman wants to be a chef, a pastry chef? In addition to this, I would observe how people function. Every weekend, I used to visit my grandparents. My brother and I would emotionally blackmail my granddad to take us to the supermarket and buy loads of snacks and junk food. And he would warn us before we left that there was not a slight chance that we were, go, were going to go by the supermarket. You all know grandparents and we all know how this story ends every single time. So this made me come to the realization that a cartoon or a character is brought to life with these traits. They're inspired by the people around and close to us, which is probably what makes them so memorable and also why we still have a, spot, a soft spot for them in our hearts. A short while after, I began to art journal and the report I had with art kept growing. But then it was finally time for me to decide what I wanted to pursue in my life. So I Googled top animation universities in the world. The information was so overwhelming. The portfolio, prerequisites and other requirements. Then I went on YouTube and just typed up uh, animation portfolios and got more answers. One day, I came across Outside the Lines 2019 by Masha Studio and immediately approached Aishwarya Ma'am and told her about my situation. We then had a formal meeting and uh, began with the portfolio development process. But the prior knowledge I had about art and design was, was totally different from what I had been learning along the road. I'm not going to lie by saying that it was easy because my observational skills were pretty weak, but I did have my conceptual skills to back me up in the process. And my chef studio helped me find a balance somewhere in between. It took me years of art journaling, studying art in grade 11 and 12 in the IB diploma and being a, a part of my chef studio ultimately helped me uh, with the entire process of applying to Art and Design University. Finally, if you do not know uh, Art and Design, it's not going to be easy just because it's an art degree. 
you have got to throw away any preconceived notions you have about art and design because it is going to be equally if not harder than you think it is but with the help of your peers and your mentor you can do it just remind yourself of your priorities have confidence don't panic and keep up the interest to learn i'd like to thank myself studio for providing this platform for me and thank you for listening to me the next speaker is riddhi who will be pursuing fashion business management over to you riddhi thank you harini can everyone hear me yeah. okay so my hi my name is riddhi and i will be headed to parsons new york this fall to study strategic design and management with a minor in fashion studies so the major that i'm actually pursuing is called fashion business management and i feel like when people look at the fashion industry as a whole they only see fashion design if they look at career options in this huge industry they see one one within the art and design field and that is pure fashion design but that could not be further from the truth there is so much that you can do within this industry there's textile design there's accessory design there's makeup there's stylization there's um there's fashion media and marketing there's fashion business management and so much more and i feel like with fashion business management i found my small little niche or the role that i fit into within this industry so talking more about fashion business management i feel like there are a lot of misconceptions as to what this major actually entails fashion business management is a major that teaches you how to work within the business in the fashion industry so fast the fashion industry is composed of innumerable brands across the globe and i think that what people don't understand is that sometimes having just a business degree is not enough to work within such an industry because its design component is so strong that there needs to be an understanding of both elements of design and of business and there needs to be a passion for both elements and that cohesiveness that just brings everything together so this is why i feel like i fit in here i did not know what i wanted to do when i was younger all i knew is that i wanted to do something creative somewhere where i could express myself and i've been doing art and design for as long as i can possibly remember but in 11th grade when i joined maisha studio i think that's when i truly realized that the fashion industry was the com component of art and design where i fit in and that was because all of the open ended projects that i was given to complete actually started diverting into fashion projects just because of what tendencies i had and the curiosity that i had for this industry at the same time coincidentally in school i was studying isc commerce and i realized that studying subjects like economics and accounts just felt so right for me it was something that made sense in my head and that wasn't something that i was ready to give up after school was over and that's why i think fashion business management came in it's the perfect combination of both so i decided to pursue this field but the the main problem with this field is how new it is it's something that has come up only in the recent years and that's why for me at least searching for universities which offered this field to the exact specifications that i wanted wasn't the easiest thing and i think that's one of the reasons i chose the us to apply for for college was because within fashion business management is a major itself i feel like these universities offered me so much room for flexibility even though i'm going with this very specific major and minor in place it still allows me to have some sort of wiggle room to move around explore mediums decide what i want to do because i feel like there's still so much out there to explore and to learn about now on to this college application process let me tell you it is 10000 times harder than anyone will ever lead you to believe it is especially if you're doing a, a major that combines two subjects if you're doing a major that combines something like fashion and business or even something like art and science it's not easy because you're trying to prove to a university that you have the capability to pursue two fields you have the passion for two fields and you have to exhibit that over an online platform in case of at least american applications through just a small application i have to get this admissions officer to understand how passionate i am about business through having good grades standardized testing essays at the same time have an amazing portfolio to show them that i have design and art capabilities and art is something where i tend to spend hours on the smallest section of the tiniest painting which might seem completely insignificant to everyone in the world but me but for some reason that's just something i can't get off my mind so 
I spent countless sleepless nights, countless times just stressing about how I was going to get into college. And I think that's where Maisha Studio came in because I remember the night before my Parsons application deadline going to Ashwarya Ma'am and being like, I'm scared. Can I just apply a couple months later? Like, I don't need to apply early. What's the worst that could happen? But she literally looked at me and she was like, this is not the time to freak out. Like, just go home, apply, send me pictures of the final outcome and we're done with it for all and like once and for all. And honestly, I could not be happy with how everything turned out. I'm so excited to be headed to Parsons this fall to study something that I'm so passionate about and see what else is in store for me. So now that you've heard my story, I'm going to hand it over to Tisya, who's going to tell you more about fashion design. Hi, can you, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Hello, my name is Tisya Asrani, and I will be pursuing fashion media uh, as my undergraduate for this uh, academic year. So as fashion business management, me, fashion media is a very, very new undergraduate program, which has come into the markets only now. What exactly is fashion media? Fashion media is touching upon every single aspect of fashion, except for fashion design, which includes fashion styling, fashion journalism, fashion photography, fashion direction, and so on. A lot of people, again, tend to see that fashion is only as one and fashion can be so much more. Why did I exactly choose to do fashion media? So very, very cliche, but since I was a very small child, I loved fashion. I loved wearing like dupattas as saris and anything relating to fashion. That's clothes, shoes, accessories, everything and anything. And I'm a very talkative person. I love talking. I love communicating with people. Being an extrovert helped me a lot. And I love interacting with people, meeting new people and, um, marketing something, actually knowing people and knowing their stories is something that I've always loved. And so when I knew about this course, not very long ago, I was just like, this is what I want to do. And this is how I'm going to move forward. At that time, I didn't have any career prospects in my mind. I just thought that whatever I want to do, whatever's the most exciting to me in my undergrad, that's what I'm going to do. Let's see what happens later. Being from a kind of creative background, I never actually had any kind of art drawing, any class that I've ever done from a young age. So I'd never been a part of it. And I had a very, very basic skill set, especially in my drawing skills. And so getting past those uh, basic skill sets and actually making a portfolio was a hard process. And um, because of having a basic skill set, and I was not able to put my ideas in the way I wanted it to uh, be out. So I started to look for other mediums which I can pursue. For example, digital platforms like Photoshop or things like that really helped me through the entire process. Uh, again, um, one of the most, the biggest learning I've ever learned from this entire process of, port of making my portfolio was that firstly, there is no such thing as right or wrong in my portfolio or in anything, any, anything creatively. Creativity is so subjective. Some people might like your work. Some people might not like your work, but that's just the entire process of it. So throughout my entire portfolio development, I went through what my gut told me to do from choosing the colors, from anything and everything. I just went with what my gut told me to do. And that's how I ended up making my portfolio. It took me some time to make it, but I was really content with what I what outcome I had. Now coming on to again fashion media, I think it's very important for anyone who's looking at fashion as an industry to go through each to, to go through the course details of each university because fashion media is has a different name in each university. At the same time, it has a different course structure. It might be similar, but at the same time, it's different. So I went through university course details, and then I decided that I would want to go to a particular university. In this case, La Salle. And that's my story. I would next like to call upon Zana, who will be doing her Art and Design Foundation program. Thank you.
Sorry, dear. You'll have to unmute, dear. We can't hear you. <laughs> <But That's sorry. laughs> Hi, I'm Zana, and I'm going to be joining Central Saint Martin's University. Um, I have been interested in art for as long as I can remember, and though I've always known that I wanted to pursue it in the future, I never could decide which stream of art it was that I would take. And so I joined Masha Studios so that I could build my portfolio and hopefully get clarity about which aspects of art I was more drawn to, which it did. Aishwarya Mam gave me a lot of open-ended projects to see which direction my interest would take me, and this helped me to narrow down my options. But still, I am interested in fashion, communication, fine arts, and graphic design. And I'm, I don't feel ready to choose one and drop the rest. So I want to learn more about all of these and then only choose my major so that I have a more informed decision. This is why I've opted for the foundation course. It allows me to explore more into all of these fields and then choose my major. I'm talking to you guys about this today because because I know there must be so many of you who feel the same way as me, and it's completely okay. I used to be so anxious about it, thinking like, oh, I still don't know what I want to do. How am I supposed to apply? What's there? Like, what do I do? But there are these courses that allow you to explore more and um, then make your decision. Apart from this, time management was my hardest challenge while building the portfolio. For me, I like to take my time and do all my art. So... I recommend that you try and keep a balance between your schoolwork, extracurriculars, and art. And personally, I started with art and design at an early age, so it gave me a good basis for um, art and design, and I definitely suggest that. It gives you a certain level of comfort with materials and um, more content to work with for your projects. Starting early would also allow you to explore the different fields and then you can decide whether you would opt for a foundation or um, a major itself. Thank you. I'm going to uh, call Sneha now, who is studying textile design. Thank you, Zana. Um, can you hear me? Yes, dear. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sneha, and I'm going to be pursuing my textile design um, in University of Arts London, and it's a master's program that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so a little about myself. Um, I did my undergraduation in visual arts, and I moved on to specialize uh, in textile design. Why textile design? Because I think from ever since I can remember, um, basically when I was doing my undergraduation, I was always drawn towards any object that carried any sort of texture, any object that had a tactile quality. And if I could touch it and, um, you know, just see the excitement that it got uh, me through, I was always intrigued to work with these objects in my projects. And somehow these ended up forming the inspiration from all my projects. So I chose to pursue textile design. And once I completed uh, my visual arts, because I had worked uh, with different aspects of art and design in college, I imagine that making a portfolio for my postgraduate course is going to be a cakewalk process. All I needed to do was mostly just put together a few projects that I had done in college and uh, compile it in a proper way and submit it in a university. So I approached Maisha Studio and Aishwarya Ma'am for my portfolio process. And when I met her, I still assumed that because I had done a textile project in my uh, final design uh, show, that I could just put that project up as my main one, and that would be more than enough to get me through the process entirely. However, when I started working on the portfolio, the reason I'm mentioning the time period here is because sometimes it can get really crazy, and it's not as easy as it seems. So I had two months to apply to any university in the world, for my master's program and when I walked in I absolutely had nothing and I'm being very honest about it because apart from my basic design projects that I had in terms of my specialization I had not really explored or developed any skills that are required of me in a master's program and I'm mentioning this because skill development is so important when it comes 
to a master's program. You need to have explored different aspects under your specialization. So for example, through my portfolio development, I went across uh, experimenting with digital printing, block printing, weaving. And while exploring every aspect, I kept learning so much. And I realized that there's so much more to do than just create a few projects and put it together. Now, the second thing that really is important is research methodologies. Research methodologies are so important because unlike a lot of Indian universities, what we really don't do is that we don't go on field and ask people questions. We do not find out, do a survey, or probably even uh, just explore and look at different things and try to find answers for yourself. We think just looking at a book probably is more than enough for us to um, create a project and come up with products. It's very easy to do that. But if there is something that I, I really learned through the entire process was working with different research methodologies. Now, as scary as it might seem that it's so much to do and you might not have enough material, this is also possible for a person who's not done their undergraduate course in anything related to art and design. If you are still interested in doing a master's program, and I'm sure there are a lot of you who would have pursued something else in undergraduation, but you want to do design in master's, you just really have to work on your skills. You have to choose what you want to do and take it up your stride and really work towards it. Do not let your fears get the better of you, but rather use it as a motivation to do that. Uh, and I'm saying this from my personal experience with because when I was working with Aishwarya ma'am, I can't tell you the number of times I actually thought on quitting this entire process. I wanted to just stop doing it and say, maybe I'll just apply next year because I'll have more time to do it. But guys, sometimes you just have to work for it, get it done with, and that propelling will really push you to get to where you are. So that's my story. And um, I hope you guys really benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that was the, the set of students. Uh, all eight of them uh, are from the 2020 batch. We are going to have some other students from the batch joining us for the Q&A. So please keep your questions coming. We are going to get into the question and answer session very shortly. But um, thank you to all of our students for sharing their stories. And I think it was very insightful because each one has a completely different uh, journey that they undertake. And um, I'm sure that there was something that each of you as viewers were able to take back from uh, every one of the students who spoke. So thank you all very much uh, to all of my, my students for sharing. Now we get into the technical aspect. What does a portfolio require? What is it that I'm looking for if I am doing a portfolio review? Whether it's an Indian university or a foreign university, the admission process is quite different, but a portfolio is something that is very, very important. So we're gonna look into the portfolio uh, guidelines in, in terms of understanding exactly what we are looking for as an institution, as an organization, what do we want to see in a creative portfolio? Number one, most importantly, your portfolio should tell us who you are. It is not about putting together a bunch of pretty pictures and submitting it, but a portfolio is like your self-portrait. It really needs to tell us about your creative process, your personal process. It needs to almost be like your um, personal diary of sorts to understand your journey. When I see a portfolio, I need to understand who the person is even without meeting the person. And then we need to understand what your interests are. What are your tendencies? A lot of times we see portfolios with very, very pretty images. Um, it could be paintings, it could be drawings, it could be pro design projects. They're all good looking, but it doesn't tell a story. So your portfolio needs to tell a story. Every project needs to tell a story. So here it's completely okay to be messy because you all know that the creative process is a messy process. It doesn't just, the final outcome doesn't just reveal itself. So the process is all over the place and it's absolutely fine to show your process in as messy a manner as it truly is so that when we see your portfolio, we are able to get an insight into your own mind. But having said that, 
apart from the fact that you are showing us your personal process and you're also creating a visual diary of sorts with all of your per personal experiences, there also needs to be focus. At the end of the day, your portfolio cannot be cluttered and chaotic. You need to be able to pick and choose what you want to present in your portfolio. And here you need to think about readability. So when I do portfolio reviews at Maisha Studio or for other universities, I always think about why students tend to put and clutter and crowd their portfolio with so many different projects, right? You need to put yourself in the place of the person who is looking into your portfolio. And it needs to be easy to understand, easy to experience, easy to read. So be simple at the same time, let your project speak for yourself. Curiosity is a very, very important element in the creative industries. And we are constantly looking for curiosity in students and in uh, budding designers and artists. Your projects should show a sense of curiosity. It should show that you are sensitive to your surroundings, to your immediate environment, that you connect with the things around you. And at the same time, you are able to work with a lot of different ways of thinking and uh, in, a, in a very dynamic manner. Let your portfolio speak for itself. Your projects should not need essays and paragraphs and paragraphs of description. Your portfolio and your projects should be self-explanatory. Even if you are not next to the person when he or she is reading your portfolio, it needs to speak for itself. And these are some of the main points for you to keep on your mind when you're putting your portfolio together. But in terms of the other aspect with regards to the technical requirements of a portfolio, the first and um, most important point to consider is the format of your portfolio. Your portfolio could be a visual, I'm sorry, a, a, a hard copy, a physical portfolio. It can also be a digital portfolio. And at a lot of times, as far as Maisha Studio is concerned, all of our students create both a visual uh, uh, digital portfolio and a physical portfolio as well. Apart from that, the structure, right? How do you structure your projects within your portfolio? And what kind of projects you put in? You can put in video, you can put in audio, you can put in uh, photographs of three-dimensional pieces and installations, you can put in collaborative work, all of that is okay, but each and every single piece needs to really say a lot about you, your technical capabilities, your conceptual capabilities as well. And so all of this together is really important. Orientation of your portfolio is really, really important to make the user experience that much more seamless. So if you're going with landscape, stick to landscape. If you're going with portrait, then stick to portrait either vertical or horizontal. Let we, it shouldn't be that the person who is reviewing your portfolio needs to you know, keep moving the screen around in order to see your projects. The quality of every single project, the quality of every single word that you put in, they all need to come together as a unit. So nothing that doesn't really make a difference should be a part of your portfolio. So it's a very important process to go through filtration in order to cut off all of the fringes and keep it very, very precise, concise to the point and where every single element speaks a lot about your personal um, capabilities. Quantity is important. Some, uh, some universities specify exactly how many pieces they want, but it isn't enough if you just make eight projects because the university is asking you for eight projects, right? It's about how good your projects are. And at the same time, some universities will not specify how many pieces. So if you are going to send 50 or 60 projects, that's too much. Nobody has the time to sit and look at 60 projects every, for every student. So you need to find a balance, pick projects that really shows your capabilities in a very, in a very um, dynamic and in a very holistic manner where it speaks about your technical skills, it should show your uh, conceptual skills, it should show your medium-based skills, your ways of thinking, your research capacity. All of this needs to be, you need to be able to present these different elements to your projects. 
research, research, research. This is something that um, is hardly ever spoken about a lot of times within the creative industries, especially in the, ed in the, in the level of education. But research forms the backbone of every good project. And we, we want to see research. If you are just going to show us final outcomes, that is not going to be enough. And in that sense, process is very, very important. Process is equally, if not more important than the final outcome. The last point that I wanted to mention was based on credits. Plagiarism is not okay in any way whatsoever. So if you're looking at a picture and copying it, you need to mention, first of all, your Ideally, you should, your, your portfolio should not have any copies from an image, but for the sake of a study, if you are looking at another picture and if you are uh, having to do a study or a reproduction of it, you need to credit the sources. If you're taking a definition of the internet, you need to credit the sources. If you're using a photograph that was not taken by you and if it is taken from the internet, you need to credit the sources. Credit, 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 acknowledge the sources, acknowledge the sources. This is one of the most important aspects about be, of, of being in the creative industries because at the end of the day, it, it's the basis of everything that we do. We're respecting other people's work just as much as we want other people to respect our work. So your portfolio needs to show that you love what you do. You, are, you have a drive to learn more and you want to explore, you're curious, but at the same time, you have developed your skills to a certain level already. So these are the two main um, you know, areas that I wanted to share with you in terms of portfolio uh, guidelines. But as far as admission process is concerned as a whole, there are a lot of different elements. For Indian universities, it starts with an entrance test. For foreign universities, it all depends on your portfolio. There's most of the time an interview that becomes a part of the admission process. Your educational transcripts are required for foreign universities and for some Indian universities, there are select standardized tests that you will have to go through. You will need recommendation letters, supplemental essays, depending on the course that you're applying for. And for sure, you will need a comprehensive resume and CV listing out all of the different activities that you have been a part of and that you have built your uh, profile over the years. So these are a very um, general and broad view of all of the different admission elements, which will work in permutations and combinations for every university, depending on the university's requirements. So we've shared a lot of information. We spoke about the different fields in art and design. Um, you, you heard the students and their personal journeys and how they have overcome a lot of challenges um, to really get to some of the best universities in the world to pursue their passion. And now I've also shared some of the main aspects that you need to keep on your mind with regards to portfolio guidelines and the admission process. The portfolio is not something that you can do overnight. You cannot, um, you know, complete a PhD overnight. So that is, it's impossible to do a portfolio over a week's time. A portfolio requires consistent, long-term commitment to the work that you're doing in order to be able to build it up. So if you are interested in an art and design career and if you haven't started working on your portfolio, you need to get started right away. So for next step, what is it that you need to do if you are interested in pursuing an art and design course at a university level? It could be an undergraduation, it could be a master's, or even if you are planning to shift from a different course to design, or if you're looking at an art and design career, the first thing that you need to do is skill development. Skill development forms the basis and the backbone of the creative industries, and it's a never ending process. So you need to develop your technical and creative skills. Secondly, that feeds into developing your portfolio. As you develop your skills, you're going to produce more work and that becomes your portfolio. You need to expose yourself to the arts. Go for film screenings, go visit exhibitions, go attend events. Um, there are a lot of online sessions happening right now. There are online courses. There are a lot of workshops happening. So you need to expose yourself to the different fields in art and design to then um, widen your horizon and knowledge within the field as well. Through all of these different experiences, you will be able to understand and identify what your passion is. 
research the courses that are available. Google is a is a is an ocean of information. So research what are the different courses that are available, and that will then help you pick universities in the next step. As far as Maisha Studio is concerned, for those of you who joined in late, our focus is primarily to help students who are interested and who are wanting to get into an education or a career within the creative industries. So it's not about um, uh, you know, one session or it's not about one meeting, but it's literally a lifetime, lifelong relationship that I establish with my students in order to guide them into both an education and a profession in the creative industries. And here our portfolio development program, our foundation programs become very important aspects that we cover um, with our regular classes at Maisha Studio. Um, design is such a huge field. Everything from product design to footwear to fashion and um, interiors, animation. It's amazing that our sessions work in a very customized manner, which means that we have students who come and start sessions who have never done art ever in their life. At the same time, we have uh, professionals who are working with us as well. So it's never too late to start. And we are very well known for uh, Outside the Lines. I'm sure that a lot of you have visited. Um, Outside the Lines is Maisha Studios annual art and design exhibition. The, uh, and the students have an absolutely amazing time being a part of a professional show during their uh, study. So please do follow us on Instagram at Maisha Studio. If you have any doubts, um, you can always write to me. We are going to move into the question answer session where we're going to have uh, the 2020 batch students of Maisha Studio joining us. Apart from the speakers, there are a few other students who are also going to be joining us to answer your questions. So um, I hope that the, uh, the information regarding the portfolio and the other aspects were um, useful to you. But if you have any questions, send us out on the question answer uh, tag right away and um, we're going to start answering your questions so i'm going to ask all of the students the 2020 batch students to join me so we can get started off with the question answers great all right so we have a lot of questions thanks to all of you for sending us questions um, Sneha, you have a question dear. Uh, Hiba wants to know where you did your undergraduation. Um, I did it in Stella. I did not Stella Maris Chennai and it's a bachelor's in visual arts. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we have another question. I have, uh, Aishwarya Ganesh says, I have pursued my undergraduation in commerce, but I want to explore art and design practice. What do you think my next step should be? Um, Azam, do you want to answer that? Yep, sure. Um, like even Aishwarya Ganesh said, it's never too late to switch careers or even switch uh, courses midway through your university studies. I myself started really late uh, in the art and design field compared to many of my peers. But then one thing you should remember is it's not easy work for sure. Um, Cause I, I struggled quite a lot to get to where I am now, which is nowhere near what I want to be. So if you are really committed to getting into the creative industry or the field of art and design, then you're, immediate next steps should be um, building your skills, building your portfolio, and also uh, following many of the guidelines that my peers and Aishwarya Aunty have recommended throughout this webinar. So that's probably the best way to go about it. Thank you, Azam. Deepa says that um, she used to draw very intricate art and mandalas and she wants to know what is the course uh, to become a professional teacher. Um, Deepa, in terms of art education, there are a lot of uh, good courses for art and design education. If you want to become a teacher, uh, then you can pursue an art or design education program, which will give you a professional certification or, or um, a, a base in order to teach design or visual arts. 
but at the same time if um, when it comes to art and design it also depends where you want to teach and and what kind of teaching you want to get into so if you don't want to do a course in education then you can spend more time in uh, becoming more skilled within the area that you're working in so then when you have more skills then that will help you um, get into teaching at a later stage in different uh, spaces i hope that answers your question um Parnika says, I would like to know about the scholarship programs available for undergraduate courses and what are the requirements? I'm going to answer that question in a moment. So um, before that, we're going to take a question from Nikita. Um, she, uh, she is asking us about fashion business management. So Rivi, can you explain what fashion business management is? So fashion business management is basically a major that prepares you to work within the fashion industry. It teaches you various concepts which sort of function within the overlap of fashion and business, such as I think it prepares you to become a buyer, it prepares you to become a merchandiser, or even to work in any field within the industry. Because like every other industry, the fashion industry has a huge behind the scenes operation. They have numerous employees doing so much work and that's basically what fashion business management prepares you for you study things like trend forecasting leadership capabilities um you have different commerce courses design courses as well because i think the main advantage of this is how like it teaches you how you can communicate with a designer because you understand what they're doing right because how exactly are you supposed to tell a designer what fabrics to use and not to use depending on the budget you have if you don't understand what clothes they're trying to make. So I think that's where fashion business management comes into play. Thank you, Riddhi. So now I'm going to go back to the question from Parnika, who um, was asking us about the scholarship programs available for undergraduate courses. Every university has a different set of scholarships available. So if you take La Salle College of the Arts, for example, there are scholarships that you can apply to after you get into the course. So depending on how well you are doing in the course, then your the possibilities of you getting a scholarship uh, becomes more. Whereas there are some other universities in the US like Pratt and Parsons that offer a scholarship application at the stage of your admission itself. So uh, every single university has a different process. There are some universities that do not offer any scholarships at all. So depending on your choice of universities, I will then be able to guide you at a later stage uh, to identify what are the different scholarship opportunities available and how do you apply for those. So it really is no, uh, there isn't a one single answer for that question because it depends on the university. Next, we have a question um, about. Sorry, just a second. It's it's good to see all the questions coming in. Um, all right. So Deepika says, I'm doing my third year in Stella, and I have various interests in uh, in the art and design field. How do I pick my path and choose the right field for post graduation? Sneha. <laughs> well, um, I can totally understand how you feel because a lot. Almost till I finished my course, I did not know what I wanted to do. Of course, textile design was something on the uh, bag always. But when you have so many interests, I would suggest that you actually sit down and see which really draws you towards it the most. Like if you ask me to put graphic textiles and illustration on a uh, same plate and ask me to pick something, I'd somehow end up going to textiles all the time. So I'm sure when you have varied interests, that you can either really sit down and go towards what you like the most, or if you want to do a course in masters, which uh, caters to all uh, the interests that you have, that is also possible. So it's possible you could do a masters in design where you have the opportunity to explore different fields under it and, uh, you know, probably develop from there. So. Thank you, Sneha. So there was a question about um, from Aditya about how do you balance your uh, portfolio work with your academics when you're in grade 12. Kushia, do you want to take that? Yes, ma'am. I think uh, the key is to prioritize and um, that's more important than anything else. You should uh, know how to manage your time very well and um, 
if you can uh, prioritize between what's important. So you have to give equal time to all your activities, your school activities, your academics, your uh, co-curriculars, and as well as building your portfolio, because somewhere um, even your extracurriculars do play an important role in your application. So I think you just have to prioritize. It's, it's not easy, but I think it, like, like Kushia said, it's about uh, finding a balance and prioritizing because if you want to pursue um, a career or study in the creative industries, then you make that commitment and you do what has to be done for it. So um, it's, it's something that all of our students go through, but at the end of the day, you really enjoy what you're doing. So you manage to find that balance. Next. Um, there's a question about from Soundarya, getting into design courses, will we need a proper list of subjects that we need to take in the 11th and 12th? Again, this depends on the specialization that you want to pursue, Soundarya. If you are wanting to take architecture, for example, in India, if you want to pursue architecture, then math and physics are mandatory subjects in order for you to be able to take up the NATA entrance exam. However, if you want to pursue um, a course like interior design or fashion design in some other country or even um, some other university in India, then they may not really have any specific subject choices. So it really depends on which university and which specialization you are planning to take up. And that will then uh, guide you in terms of your subject choices. We have another question regarding fashion business management. What are the job opportunities for fashion business management? There are infinite job opportunities when it comes to fashion business because it's such a huge field. I'm going to let Tissia take this uh, question and I'll probably add on to it later. Tissia, you want to go? I think... Um people tend to see that fashion business or fashion media don't have that many job opportunities. But from every small aspect, fashion business, how do you run a business? You need economics, you need accounts, you need all your basic commerce subjects. So uh, all, you need to hire people for that. And for anything as basic as a business to run, or take a take the big brand, for example, Versace or even Gucci. They need uh, people to run the business. They have designers, they have stylists, but uh, without the people who run the business, for example, the people who market the business, the people who advertise the business, social media advertising, website designing, all that is plays a much not a much bigger role. I wouldn't say a much bigger role, but it plays a very, very major role in the entire process. So there are infinite job opportunities for anyone who wants to pursue fashion business management or fashion media, anything. If I, if I can add on to uh, Tissia's um, response, you can become a fashion stylist. You can work in the marketing team in brands. You can head fashion brands. You can work with uh, manufacturing units. You can work in journalism. You can get into writing for fashion. You can work in publishing. You can work um, as, a, um, as a costume designer or as a costume stylist, not designer, but a costume stylist. So there's just infinite possibilities. You can also become a, a person who is more into sourcing or you can also get into trend forecasting. These are all options uh, that come out of a, a, a study in fashion business and management. Um, we're gonna take a very important question and a very common question. Is doing undergraduation better in India or abroad? Now, this is a very, very common question. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this question myself, but it really depends on the specialization that you're going to work with. In, there are a lot of very, very good Indian universities like uh, NIFT for fashion, and then there's NID, there are a few more. Um, but having said that, the reason why a lot of in, uh, Indian students who can afford a foreign education, a lot of them end up taking up a, a foreign education because of the fact that there's a lot more exposure in um, other countries. So then it's the, whole, it's the package as a whole. It's not just about going to a foreign university. Studying in a foreign university is not going to make you a successful designer or artist. But having said that, 
when you take being a learning how to manage your own time learning how to manage your own resources being exposed to a a very very diverse set of people in terms of the student population all of that together adds on to the experience and somewhere some place um india is still our comfort zone right we still know how things work here in comparison to a completely new place where you're learning the culture you're learning um a new a new type of lifestyle and you're learning to fend for yourself apart from getting into this new field so there is no right or wrong here there are students of mine who have gone to indian universities and who have done phenomenal work um much much uh, you know advanced and better work when compared to some foreign universities and it's happened vice versa as well so it really should come down to not just picking a foreign university for the sake of going to a foreign university but understanding what each of these universities offer and then choosing a course and a program that will give you the best um experience as a whole so i hope that answered um uh, your question um hmm this is an interesting question art is usually seen as a rich people thing that someone studies only when they have a backup plan what is your opinion on that um do any of you want to take it okay i'm going to go for it riti go for it go on see i i've heard that to a lot like from people who are like you take art because in case you don't succeed you have something to fall back on because a lot of people think that again that's when art is viewed as a very narrow field that that's when art is viewed as you trying to become successful as an artist as a fine arts painter or someone who needs that sort of in short fame to get their works to sell right but the thing is art art includes design as a component as well there's so much you can do there's you don't have to just sell paintings to become successful in the art industry there is if one thing doesn't work you can move on to the next there's i feel like there's so much room for what people would call error but not really in this industry that you actually don't need that fall back option i think that if someone no matter where their economic financial standing is if you're truly passionate about the subject that go for it you'll figure it out along the way because your like will to make that subject work and make that part of your life will work itself out in the end so i agree dear uh, the thing is that at the end of the day it's it's quite in i mean it's quite ironic that pretty much every single thing around us has a designer behind it but we still don't consider design as a professional course and um, that's that's very ironic and and i think us as designers and artists it falls under our responsibility to also raise awareness about this because just as much as we need um, doctors and scientists and teachers um, if you don't have designers around you you're not going to have more than half the things you have around you at the moment <laughs> so from the um, you know from the toothbrush that you use pretty much everything has a designer behind it and there is absolutely no question that it is a a very technical professional field to get into with a range of possibilities and because skill development is such an important part of the creative industries it really sets you up to a constantly changing and evolving world and so with changing times if you are a part of the creative industries and if you are going to work on your skills then you are going to be safe and you don't need a backup plan so um you are definitely safe in that sense we have another question is it necessary to take science for product design azam mira um personally i'd say not really because for me going to product design i'd not i didn't take any of the mainstream sciences but i took a science called design technology which was kind of product design so that really helped but in short no you don't need a mainstream science to go to product design thank you dear if you are looking to get into a science university like iit or mit then there will be a requirement for science and specific science like physics or chemistry or math but if you are getting into an art school or a design school then depending on the university there may not be a requirement for science 
So again, it comes down to uh, specifically based on the university, the requirements will change. There's a question about what are the other basic courses that one needs to take apart from academics, say, for example, taking a photography course or working as an intern with someone from the industry. Sadhana, you want to take that? Definitely working with someone in the industry will give you a lot more exposure in exposure and before you actually start your course, you'll be aware of a lot more concepts. So that way it will help you. Um, but at the same time, if, when you enter your course itself, you should be able to balance all your works. So you shouldn't feel overwhelmed immediately with uh, all your commitments. So that way, I guess you should find the right balance if you want to take up industry exposure as well. Thank you, Julia. Um, if I can add on to that, what I would say is let your first step and priority be skill development. If your skills are not up to the mark, then there's no point in you going and interning or taking up other smaller courses. But if you are already working on your skill development, for example, Sadhana, who just answered the question, um, after working with me for a year and a half, then she started taking up internships outside. And I also put her on to a few other short courses to do to add on to the skill set and experiences that she already has. So that then it really adds on to your already strong foundation. But if you don't have a strong foundation and if you're just going to go into a lot of diverse courses and internships and experiences, that's just going to confuse you and kind of make you float around a little more rather than anchor you in terms of your uh, skills and uh, experiences. So I would say first priority skill development and then move on to taking up other short courses and internships as well. We have a few more questions. Is there any specific group in the 11th grade that I need to take to pursue animation? Our animation representative will answer that question. <laughs> um, so basically I did uh, visual arts in the international baccalaureate program. But uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, I know so many of my CBC friends who have also applied and got into animation. Uh, you just have to get, in most universities, you just have to get a cutoff in your academic proficiency. Other than that, you'll be fine. You don't need to choose a specific group. Just focus on your portfolio. And if you're applying abroad, just focus on the standardized tests and uh, your portfolio. Other than that, you don't have to choose a specific group to get into animation. Thank you, dear. There's another question about fashion design. Share, can you can you share what led you to choose fashion design? Yeah. Um, from when I was really young, um, I used to like look around me and I'd keep imagining various like buildings or like vehicles and imagine like forms of garments and that's always been a thing for me so and I didn't know if I wanted to do that exactly but like like after joining my studio I like dug into it deeper and like I realized that that's what I wanted to do. All right yeah. thank you. Alafia has a question what do I do if I'm not really interested in the technicality involved in creating a building or subject or structure? but I'm interested in the process of its evolution, like designing, etc. Akshara, <laughs> sounds familiar, isn't it? Um, this is the exact same thing that happened to me. Um, thing is, I wasn't really interested in structures, but I really love the process of designing. So I chose communication design because I felt to connect with media and stuff like that. But if you are definitely interested in creating a building structure and you're interested in the process of it, I think you should still st stick to architecture because in the future, you can get people to do the construction part for you. So the structural aspect, you only have to learn in your course of BDES. So if you're interested in buildings, please stick to that. Otherwise, maybe it's not too late. <laughs> Thank you, dear. So it really depends, like she said, as to whether you, you want to pursue uh, spatial design or whether you want to look at it slightly differently. For example, in fashion, you saw Shreya, who's going to be doing fashion design versus Riddhi and Pisya, who are going to be doing fashion, fashion business management and fashion media. Similarly, with spatial design, architecture involves the, the, 
the design of the structure itself. Interior design works with the interiors and there's, there's also interior decoration and interior styling. So it really depends on where your interest falls and then your choices can go accordingly. Well, um, Asila has asked, is it necessary to go through an art course to build a portfolio? I've been doing art for a really long time and I want to pursue architecture. So um, I would say that it's really important for you to definitely get um, a certain level of, of mentorship regarding your portfolio, especially because you are planning a shift from art to architecture. Architecture being a technical design field will require certain specific subject based uh, projects that will have to be a part of your portfolio. Just like how Sneha came from an art uh, undergraduation, because she was uh, applying to a textile design program, she did. She is undergoing a session uh, wherein there is a, a certain shift in terms of the approach. So I would definitely suggest if you really want to push your bar higher and become better at what you're doing, um, a certain level of mentorship or a course to build your portfolio for that particular um, area will definitely make a lot of difference. There was another question which um, I kept for later because uh, again, this is a common question that we get. Nia is asking us, since all students are working on their own projects and work, how would a typical class at Maisha Studio be? Anshika, do you want to answer that? Um, so I'm just going to start off with the fun aspect of this because in every class, no matter what I'm doing or what the person next to me is doing, I find inspiration in the people around me as well. Um, the fun thing is that you, you ma'am, in, encourages you to go and speak to them, get their ideas as well, no matter what they're working on. So um, a typical class sometimes for me is to start off as really, I'm really tired from school and I just came and I was like, auntie, I need something fun today. Um, so, and on some days I'm just like, auntie, my application is really close. I need to really push it now. So um, it really varies, each class varies, but it's fun. You learn so much in one day um, and it's the small tips that matter the most. And I think I learned that not just from ma'am, but also from the students around me. Thank you, dear. Rachita, do you have anything to add to that? What according to you uh, is a typical class at Maisha Studio? Um, a typical class at Maisha Studio, I feel like is really fun because when I joined in 11th grade, I wasn't sure like what I, like if I even wanted to do art or not, but joining like, I had so much fun while doing art in Maisha Studios that I really wanted to take it up as something I want to do. So I, it's more, it's a lot of work. Like you do a lot of work and really interesting things and fun at the same time. Thank you. Kusha, yes, dear. I would, I would just like to add on that. Um, I think a typical class for me at Maisha Studio is that we're all, we are sometimes working on collaborative projects. Um, we take inputs from each other on what, what we are working on. Uh, we share our works. And uh, sometimes ma'am just gives us some fun project that everyone works on. So uh, when we build our portfolio, um, we, we, have a, we have an array of projects to show because we have worked on different aspects and it's not just uh, one uh, direction that we work towards. Yes, um, having a tendency, we have more projects in that particular aspect, but we do work on uh, various uh, types of projects um, at a class. Thank you, dear. In terms of pedagogy, my uh, teaching methodology works in a way where I look at every single student as an individual and there is absolutely no um, connections or similarities that I even try to draw between the students that I work with. Whether I'm working with five students or 500 students, I. I think it's really important to see and understand everyone as an individual. So that means that every student in a typical Maisha studio class is on a completely different track. We do speak to each other, we do interact with each other, uh, but we all come from different backgrounds and we're moving into different areas as well. And there's a lot of peer learning that happens. So most of the time the problem is where do I start, right? So 
my job is to not just give students projects to work on, but also to um, give them the skills that are required in order to do the projects, right? So it's about um, pushing them off the cliff and then teaching them how to fly as well. <laughs> so that pretty much uh, describes what I do. Um, we're gonna get a few more questions before we wrap up. Um, which, uh, what colleges have good fine art courses in India? There are a lot of really good fine art uh, universities. There's JJ School of Art, there's um, Shanti Niketan, there's Baroda. Um, so these are all classic schools. In Chennai, of course, there's Government College of Fine Arts, there's Stella Maris, there's um, Kalakshetra. So it depends again on which style of art you want to pursue. Parnika has a question. If you want to study interior design, you should take architecture, therefore take the sciences at school. This was what the teachers in my school recommended. What is your perspective on it? Do not listen to anybody else. You pick, uh, you pick subjects that you are interested in because you're going to be the one going to school every day <laughs> and, and studying. So when I was in school 15 years ago, <laughs> um, Everybody said, you're just getting into design. Why do you want to do science? Why can't you just do commerce? It's very easy. And I never understood it. And I still don't understand it because I connect with science. I come from a science background. I cannot imagine my life without science, but I do not connect to commerce. I do not connect to economics. So it doesn't make sense to me that somebody thinks that commerce and economics is easy. So they want me to take a subject that they think is easy right? That doesn't make sense. So irrespective of um, what anybody else feels, I think it's important for you guys to identify what you are interested in studying and then take those subjects. But having said that, if you want to do architecture, for example, and if you hate math and if you hate physics in school, then you're stuck because you need physics and math to take up NADA. So in those kind of situations, you will have to do a little bit of trade off and find a balance. But otherwise, I would always say pick subjects that you like to work with. Um, all right, we're just going to take one more last question. There are a couple of a uh, couple of you who have asked me about moving from a different course, like an undergraduation in sociology or a bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics moving to a master's program in art or design. Number one, you need to make sure that you have taken other courses on the side to develop your skills because definitely at a master's level, you are going to have to uh, present and showcase the technical skills that you have in order to be able to make yourself, um, um, are, you, are you ready to take on a master's program? Are you eligible to take up a master's program in terms of the skills? So that you need to be able to showcase and also pick a course that allows you to come from a different background. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to write to me. You have my um, email ID and phone number. Please get in touch with us. You can connect with us on Instagram at Maisha Studio as well. Um, we're just going to um, wrap up in a minute. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, joining us. Um, Nikita is asking us whether uh, commerce is really important if you want to do fashion business management. Tisya. Uh, commerce is important if you want to do fashion business management, but it depends on which college you want to pursue it in. I think for US, it's important because you have accounts and economics in your college. Uh, but for a fashion media course, it's not, it, it's needed. It's not that needed. But for a fashion business management, I think it's particularly needed because you need those particular subjects. Right. So it's not mandatory. Uh, commerce or accounts or business is not mandatory for you to apply to a fashion business course unless you're applying to a business school and they have mandatory uh, requirements. All right. So we have uh, looked into quite a few of the questions. I'm sorry if we could not answer all of your questions, but please do write to us. And uh, thanks to all of the viewers for joining us today. Um, I, again, apologies for the initial technical glitches. We will share the recording of the session so you can go through it again. And please feel free to get in touch with us anytime. 
we do for all of you who asked about uh, textile design courses and uh, students who are doing visual arts right now who want to pursue other forms of art and design at a later stage we do have a professional development course for artists and designers starting from june 15th uh, follow us on instagram and the poster for the professional development course will go up tomorrow so if you are coming from a non art and design background and if you want to get into art and design or if you've already completed your undergraduate or you're currently in your undergraduate you don't know how to move forward or you don't know how to develop your skills you're not clear as to what specialization you want to take in your next step or you want to become an entrepreneur all of these different aspects we will be covering within the professional development course so do get connected on instagram and if you have any quest further questions please do write to us thank you so much to all of you for joining us and thanks to all of our students for uh, being such wonderful uh, co-hosts for the session as well so uh, that's um, strokes this is our very first edition i'm looking forward to more events in the future and now signing off thank you all of you for uh, making this event a success thank you and um, please do write to us in case of any other questions all right thank you bye bye